That's recording. Okay, um, just come around this area maybe. I've got to face the camera. Okay, just carry on with that idea yesterday in the in form. We just finished Yang Ching Fu's form. This applies to Yang Le Chan's form or any forms you do, of course, of uh, getting in with the rhythm of the form. Hey, well, how are you, mate? Good, mate. As I said, the most important thing is not doing your form so much. You've got to learn it, of course, in its basic format, but not doing the form so much as getting, mixing your own body rhythm with the rhythm of the form. So it's important to find the natural rhythm of the form, and that will change your whole form into a totally different thing. You must also rely upon, or differentiate rather, between yang and yin. So the legs, there's an old Chinese saying that says, the yang takes care of itself, and that allows the yin to work. So they can't work without each other. So, down here is strong, it's powerful, it's grounded. As soon as you bring any tension into the upper body, you lose that groundness, you lose that weightedness. Now there are a few things that I did in that form. That form we did this morning, by the way, was my personal form. It's my private form. No one ever sees that. So, uh, I hope you all had your eyes closed. <laughs> That's my own form. That's how I do the form in the mornings. Uh, Yang Lu Chan's form's the same. I do that in the same manner, totally in harmony with the form. And that's the old classic of the form teaches you rather than you learning from someone, the form teaches you. So all, all my job is to do is to teach you the form or any teacher you have is to teach you the movements as long as that teacher has the correct basic movements. They just teach you the movements and then it's up to you to glean what you can from the form and for the form to grow inside and to teach you. And growing inside means that you learn about the natural rhythm of the Taiji form. This applies to Bagua as well, lesser so to Xingyi though. Now this groundedness, this yang down here, if you lose it, you have to get it back again. And there are certain times during the form when we can get back that differentiation between yin and yang. And they're strategically placed within the form. And you might have noticed when I was doing wave hands like clouds in that particular form, that my feet That's all you have to do. And the very instant you do one of those, or one of those, you feel this separation of yin and yang, and your upper body then becomes like the wind again, or the clouds, in other words, in, the, in this particular posture. So as I said yesterday, there are certain times when you start out your form, and you might start out with all good intentions, oh, this is lovely, and then you're a third of the way through, or the half the way through, or something, you start to lose it. You start to think about something over there, or thinking about things. So that's the time when you must, and that's usually around about where we do the wave hands like clouds. So that's why there are more in the third third than the second third, and there are none in the first third, because by the third third, you get a little bit tired, and you say you start to think, and a little bit of tension starts to creep up, and you're not differentiating between yin and yang anymore. So that's why we have it twice in the third third, so you can then redef redefine your yin and yang so that you can then be solid like a tree with roots going into the ground and like the clouds up here, soft with absolutely no tension whatsoever other than the few strands of muscle that needed to hold your hands in those positions. Um, as I said yesterday, getting in with the rhythm of the thing moves your hands in 
slightly different areas to which you're taught at a basic level. And this has a very important aspect and you might, as, you might have noticed this. For instance, uh, when we're doing these, oh, as I said, yeah, I may, might have made mention of this yesterday, when we're doing these movements, you'll notice that I did them very low, right down near the Dantien. There has a reason for that. And especially when we're doing the, uh, the very first one is You notice how the hand came up. It didn't just go to here, then just come up like that in an arc. It went to here, and as it pushed down, it continued that arc down, almost touching the Dantien, down a little bit, and then up in an arc. It still comes past the dragon mouth point, up in an arc, out this way now. There's a very good reason for that. And you'll also notice that when, we, when I did this movement here, It was all done down low. This is to activate your Dantien because all the Qi comes from the Dantien. It goes to the bubbling well point, but it's, it's like speed of light. But it comes from the Dantien. You activate your Dantien by the movement of your hands. Now, if someone goes like this in the form, nothing's going to happen, obviously. You have to be 